Okay, you're welcome for today's class. Uh, we're going to look at group account where there is more than one group. You can see it. This is professional class, so you're used to it. So we have Bagat PLC is a holding company that has three, two subsidiary and one associate. So you can see Bagat and Magat and Megat. And you can see their financial statement. You can look at it. You can see this. Good. The note will be given to you at the end of the class, but the essence is for you to master how the solution was prepared. So these are the additional information. On June 2012, Bagat acquired 80% of the equity interest of Magat, you see. And the date of acquisition, the return ending of Magat was this and other components were 80 million. There had been no new issue of capital by Magat since the date of acquisition. The purchase consideration comprised cash, 6 billion. Whereas the fair value of the identified net asset is 8 billion. The essence of the fair value of the net assets is due to an increase in the value of non depreciable land. An independent valuer has stated that the fair value of the non controlling interest is this amount 1.72 billion. It is a policy to measure NCI using proportionate method. On June 1, that same date, Bagat acquired the MIGAT and the consideration was 2 million 560 billion. Under the purchase agreement, Bagat is required to pay the former shareholders. For 2014 to 2013, the value, this fair value is $120 million. So this is contingent consideration. You should know how to treat it. This amount has not been included in the financial statement. So the fair value of identified net assets is this amount. You understand, of equity. We have $1.1 billion and $140 million respectively. There has been no new issue of capital. And the fair value of NCI is 1 million, 6 billion, 1.06 billion naira. You can see that the MEGAT is valued using fair value, Why MAGAT is valued using the proportionate. Finally, BAGAT acquired another entity, which is um, an associate for four, uh, 400 million. And the profit for the year is. 200 million including receivables we are this so this is intra-group receivables you know how to treat it you eliminate it goodwill has been impaired for magnet and the value of it is 36 million dollar you are required to consolidate so the first thing you prepare is net assets so you prepare net assets for the date of reporting date of acquisition date of reporting date of acquisition and pare now under date of reporting you recognize the two subsidiaries under date of acquisition you recognize the two subsidiaries pare you recognize the two subsidiaries that way is the better way to present it so we have equity you see equity for magnet is four million four hundred thousand and for megat is two thousand same with magna same with megat and all this so return earning was given as this so this one is the one in the books of financials in the financial position this one is also the one in the book in the financial position this one we're given in the additional information when the business was acquired that is why it is date of acquisition you already used to this as professional students good then we'll move on to other equity is stated the same way nothing changed the fair value surplus. This was not given. You calculate it. How do you calculate it? Since the fair value of net assets is eight thousand eight billion naira, so and you've added the value of this, this, <coughs> and this. Whatsoever it gives, so minus it from eight billion, it will give you eight hundred. So if you add four thousand four hundred plus two thousand seven twenty plus 80 it will give you 7200 so minus 7200 from fair value you now have the fair value surplus that is how this 280 was also gotten they also gave us fair values in the book of mignard to be this so this 3 million 3 billion 520 thousand is a fair value of magnet so when you minus these three as usual you have 280 million as fair value surplus this is a difference between uh, retain ending at that date of reporting and retain ending as a date of uh, acquisition 
So we have adjusted retained earning. Why are we adjusting the adjusted retained earning of Mignat? We are adjusting it for Mignat because Mignat's uh, uh, fair value surplus is as a result of uh, uh, what is it called again? Is as a result of um, a plant and machinery that is depreciable and it has seven years useful life. You understand? So this is for Mignat. Now, since it is for Mignat, so one six is a um, retain any at a date of financial position. So minus forty, which is a excess depreciation. So and how did we get it? Two eighty, which is this retain, uh, which is this excess fair value surplus, divided by seven, the useful life. You now have forty. You understand. So that is how we got uh, 140. So if you divide and your answer will now be equal to will now be equal to 1,560 uh, 1, naira. So goodwill was calculated. Purchase consideration. These are the values that was given in the equation. You have it. Contingent consideration. There was no contingent consideration for Magnus, but for Mignat there was then we have NCI was also given and NCI is uh, 1600 and this one is 1060 so we now have total of purchase consideration to be this so minus the net assets which we calculated above you now have your goodwill and gain on purchase consideration the one in bracket is gain on purchase consideration and it will be added in the consolidated return earning this one is goodwill and it will be treated as an asset but there was impairment of 36 million you can you saw it that was the last thing we read so we now have this as goodwill so we'll move down to nci nci was calculated remember that magnet nci is valued using proportionate magnet is valued using a fair value so this you already know we brought it from the question why this parade was calculated this one was also calculated using the percentage owned by Bagat on the two post acquisition retain any so you have this so consolidated retain any you bring in the pc consolidated retain any is in the balance sheet there you can see it is in the balance sheet so we'll move down to uh, the parade of magnets and magna that the parent company collected and it gave us this and this how did we get this two values we said 280 which is a pare minus the one nci took 460 pare minus 138 that nci took so that was how we got these two values accordingly so you now bring in your share of profit from associates that share of profit from associates is this look at how it was calculated the profit that the associate made was 200 million so the investor will take 25 percent and that is 50 and that 50 will have dual effect you also bring it here 50. so you're now bringing your gain on purchase consideration which we calculated that roof you bring in your impairment that you might not see your impairment 36 so you have this so that is now about this so the next thing now you look at is a solution so we'll look at the solution now the solution is simple as professional student, I expect you to be able to practice because after this level, you become a chartered accountant. And believe you me, as a professional and a practicing auditor, is not funny there. Nobody will show you any real work. They will say you are chartered and you should know. So you will go home and look at how these figures were gotten. You can always come back to watch this video again and cross check after all the workings has been done. How do you get PPE? I'll tell you orally so you know. You add the PPE of the holding company, the PPE of the subsidiary, the PPE of the second subsidiary. You understand? So you now add the fair value surplus. The fair value surplus that were calculated in working number one, the two of them. You now minus excess depreciation, you have this value. I didn't show it because I wanted you to go and do work so that it will not be spoon feeding you. So move down to goodwill. Goodwill was calculated, you bring the value in. We move down to investment in associate, it was calculated in the last working, we bring it in. Available for say investment is in the equation you add the three to give you this value. Current assets the same. Then in inventory, you just add the three. 
then for trade receivables you must be careful to treat the uh, 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 intergroup transfers accordingly so you take note of that and as i said drop your question if you don't understand anything i will entertain it everything is done online and very soon we'll create another group chat where we have only students have paid and follow them up as they have challenge and issues so this is equity you take care of it there's nothing in equity the all the workings have been done remember in consolidation you only take the equity of the parent company so this is the only equity of the parent company you take earnings you take it also which we did workings for other equity you take it only the parent company then nci we calculated the add the boats of the subsidiaries then total equity you have this so with this we are good to go then you take care of non-current asset adding to then for current liabilities you must be careful to treat the intra-group payables and receivables here and by minusing it as usual so that is that for all if you check very well the accounts balanced and i prepared it in a very simple way that you would understand so if there is any question you call me or chat me up or drop your question at the chat group there and it will be entertained that is that for that for today do have a nice day good night and please try and pay up